Look at that. Good as new. That's what I call a mechanical win. Hello bike farmers, thanks for clicking in. I have my friend Noah's Raleigh Hybrid, and actually this used to be owned by my friend Mark, who used it as a commuter bike, and basically ran the thing into the ground. So I have completely rebuilt this bike once from the ground up, then uh, put it on my used floor, and Noah was looking for a bike, and this fit the bill, so now he's giving it a second life and riding it just as hard. Noah's been in here in the shop doing a bunch of work, and well, basically rebuilt my house last summer. It's been a very mild winter here in Wisconsin. He's been thinking about getting out on his bike and hasn't had one to ride because this one's not working right. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on with it, but he asked me to take a look at it. So we'll throw it in the stand, check the usual suspects, do what I do, start in the back and move to the front, go through everything, clean it, lube it, and adjust it. So let's get started. Got the bike here on the ground. Just gonna throw some fresh grease in the seat tube. This one looks to be pretty good. There's absolutely no signs of corrosion or anything here. But for the sake of consistency, and just to be certain, we'll do what it takes. I always like to drop a little bit of tri-flow on the quick release here. Get that moving right. Use my trusty chain checker here just to make sure that nothing's stretched out. Yeah, we're good. Just double check here. Yeah, I mean, ugh. no need to replace any parts, just some lube there. All right, let's throw it up in the stand. Okay, per the use, drop the chain into both small rings, front and rear, and pop the wheels off. He's got a trailer mount here, so a little more finagling. Get things freed up. Now when I dropped the chain, I felt it in these shifters that uh, they're ready for a little bit of one step. This is a cleaner and lubricant. It's a real fine lubricant, basically. But if you stick your nozzle up inside there and just flood the whole works there. kind of work it. Yeah, I can feel it in the, in the housing too. He's ready for a tune-up. He wasn't lying. Okay, we'll just kind of let that soak and be. When you have the bike at this stage, it's really easy if you just Press the derailleur in like that, and you can get that piece of housing out. And that creates enough slack usually to get all of the cables. Well, at least that cable. And then you can do the same with the front, where if you pull it out, and then you find where it has a home, usually right there. And now that one's disconnected. These brakes, uh, we've got disc brakes with housing all the way from the lever to the brake. So we're just gonna use gravity in that. Um, instead of loosening things up and taking the cables out and re-lubing, um, they feel really good already. So we're just gonna use gravity and drop some lube in there in a little bit. But once you have 
your cables to this point. I just use TriFlow, little bottle, and all of this stuff is available um, through affiliate links in the description. So pretty much everything I use, if you see me use something and there's not an affiliate link, let me know and I'll do my best to add one for the future videos. But I go through and everywhere the cable goes through housing. And don't forget your cable guide down here. We'll get the front one here. I just kind of ran my finger over the cable. Saw some gunk. Just let my gloves pick it up. And again, right where it goes through the cable guide down below. Get things lubed and put back into place. It can be a little bit easier to clean the frame without the cables connected, but I probably should have done that. We'll do that now. Behold, I just used furniture polish. It's got a brilliant shine. It cleans gently and it preserves and protects and it has a lemony fresh scent. This is classic Noah, if you knew him, which some of you probably do. But bungee cording, some bug spray to the water bottle cage is classic. You never know where this guy's gonna end up on this bike. He has an adventuresome spirit, which I enjoy. and he hates bugs. I really like bikes like this that have stood the test of time. They've seen plenty of maintenance over the years. There's been some parts replaced. Obviously, you know, brake pads and stuff like that. Um, cables, housing, that kind of stuff all gets replaced when it needs it. Um, chain rings. This one's got some new chain rings. My friend Mark was a daily commuter, so he ripped through chain rings like crazy. He's a real cranker. Anyway, you do all that stuff and you know like this this is a replacement derailleur, I believe. Um, but you can keep these bikes going forever, literally. I guess the frames will break eventually, but takes quite a bit to break a frame. Anyway, it makes these tune-ups much easier. A lot of what I'm doing today is preventative. I mean, I'm definitely making improvements to this bike, but it just ensures that the bike is always working properly and as designed. Functionally, it's pretty good. You know, as good as it's ever gonna be. There's never any need on a bike like this too to, for what people would like to call upgrades. You know, if you're replacing parts, it doesn't make any sense to put anything super fancy on it. This is just a good utilitarian bicycle. Aluminum frame doesn't rust out on you. Good for the Wisconsin winters if you do want to get out on a day like today where we got a bunch of snow overnight and it's nice and warm, it's all melting. I saw them putting salt down. I don't know why they would do that. That's no good. But whatever. Uh oh, I don't know if you can see it here, but Deadpool is missing his head. I hope I didn't do that, Noah. I don't see a head laying around here. Okie dokie. 
Yeah. Grips are in good shape. Nice squishy saddle. I have no idea what it smells like. There you go. Floss this rear derailleur here. Should we floss Noah's nether regions? If you read in the comments, Noah will tell you about how much he likes having his nether regions flossed. My family has no idea what's wrong with me. They tell me all the time, what the hell's wrong with you, bike farmer? Look at that crank, it's all just naturally worn. That's what they call busage. Beauty from usage. It's a Rivendell term, coined by Grant Peterson. Lord Grant, as I like to call him. Get some of this crud off these pulley wheels. I think I'm just gonna use a little more one step here. Just kind of hose it down. Drive some viewers crazy. But I think one step is magic. Just really makes everything look and work better. Why not, right? So I didn't even check the shifting yet, but I'm seeing things here. So this is the barrel adjuster right here. So you've got your housing and then the ferrule and then the barrel adjuster. And then this, I don't know, barrel adjuster grabby hooky thing. And obviously there's a spring in there, but I am going to turn this barrel adjuster all the way in. Okay. And you can see it, it's hiding in the plastic grabby holdy turny twisty thingy. Okay, so now it's in all the way. Ugh. I'm gonna back it out, I don't know, maybe two or three turns. You know, just so we can just see it poking its head out there. Okay, now, yeah, okay. So, I don't know, the cable feels really tight. Cable feels tight. So that might be his shifting problems right there is the cable was too tight. Anyway, if you have your barrel adjuster all the way in, now I'm gonna loosen the cable so I'll loosen the cable anchor bolt here. Okay. Now my cable is loose. And I'm just pulling on it just to make it snug, but not like really tight cable. And we'll tighten it down. Okay. Oh, dropped my wrench. So now I have plenty of barrel adjuster to tighten. So tightening the cable is lefty loosey on the barrel adjuster. And what that does is it increases the length of this housing here and tightens the tension of the cable. So that feels like a tight cable and we have room to go looser 
or tighter so we can fine tune it later. That's how that works. I'm gonna delicately lubricate this front derailleur. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. I gotta say, it has been a few weeks since I've been in the shop working on a bike because I've had house projects, which Noah is a big part of. We put on a big addition, we put in a furnace upstairs and that wasn't working right. So we had to move it downstairs, which meant that it goes in the bike shop. So the shop has been out of commission while we put that in, but they finished up and this is the first bike I'm doing since that project that has kind of knocked me out of commission for a couple of weeks. And it feels really good to be back here making bike videos. I like this. So, front derailleur is lubed. I was hanging out with a friend this weekend who's been watching my channel. He's like, yeah, I'd like to see a video on you power washing your filthy truing stand. And I've never been so offended in my entire life. So I'm not friends with that guy anymore. I love this truing stand. It's not my first one. I still do have the first one. I think it's in the bike mobile. But this is the original Gibbs bike shop one. This is the one I set up when I opened the shop. So this rag has a good amount of polish and you know it's got some good filth going on it. It's basically a tack, tack cloth at this point. And I'm just going through and knocking off the dust that's accumulated. Wipe down each spoke. And then I'm gonna wrap my finger, wrap the rag around my finger like that. And it's hard with these disc brake wheels. But if you kind of rub the inside of the hub, polish the hub shell a little bit. It's an aesthetic thing. Makes it look like I did more than I did. We'll check this rim for true. And as expected, it's really good. Make a little tweak. Just a couple little tweaks, but that wheel's really good. And we'll do the same thing with the front wheel. Noah was telling me that one of his favorite parts about this bike is the lockout fork. And I see how it's all dirty in here. So I'm gonna see if I can make that prettier. It's a little better. Try some Dawn Power Wash. And 
one of these brushes. So as promised, I was gonna lubricate this brake cable using gravity. So here we go. So if you put some lube in there and then work it, just let gravity suck that tri-flow down into the cable and housing. in there. Feels pretty good. We can do the same with the front. We gotta flip the bike upside down. these wheels back on and maybe turn this thing back into a bicycle, huh? Want to get the skewer tension right, which I think is a lot of skewer tension because he's towing a trailer here drop some lube on the mechanism. I know you can't see any of this, but I'm holding everything here and I'd have to let it go to go get the camera and set it up, get that shot. And I'm just gonna get the job done here. Little bit of persuasion from the old rubber mallet. squirt a little bit of tri-flow back here in the free hub body. Seems a little loud. I'm guessing it's wearing out. We're gonna cross that bridge when we get there. of skewer lubin. I think we'll do brake pads next tune-up, Noah. Remind me. That's nice and quiet. Yeah, 
yeah, the brakes feel great. No adjustments needed. So I'm uh, going through here and putting a drop of tri-flow in each of the bolt heads. And that just kind of keeps things from rusting. You know, moisture likes to collect in bolt heads. Just the thing I do. All right, let's see how this thing shifts. I think the front derailleur is fine. That's my guess at least. Okay, cable's a little tight. Turning the barrel adjuster in a smidge. That helps it drop down. So I could hear it. Now that's just experience, but I could hear the chain rubbing on the derailleur, which told me that the cable was still a little tight. I don't know how to explain that noise or how to detect it. Okay, this is acting a little funny. So I think we're gonna check the hanger, see how straight the hanger is before we get going too far on things. So we're going to take the derailleur off. I like to relieve the tension on it. I'm going to just let her dangle down there for a sec. Um, this is the Park Tool DAG 2.2 derailleur alignment gauge. And that screws into the hanger. Okay, and then we've got this post with a couple of little rubber wubby dubbies on it. So we'll check it there, and then we go to the opposite side of the wheel and check it there. Well, that's good. Okay, so that's way off up here. I'm gonna very cautiously, so I don't break it, if you want to be totally certain, you just replace the hanger. These hangers are made of a very brittle aluminum. They're kind of made to break so you don't mess the frame up. Okay, so that's good there. Check nine o'clock again. And three o'clock, nooner, six. That's a straight as one has ever been. So a little bit of a tweak there. We'll see if it made any difference. It doesn't seem like it should. We didn't do too much bending. That was an easy one. Get your derailleur put back on. Let's see what happens now. Starting the high gear. We're good there. One. There's a little bit of a hesitation there. Two. Three. Four. Okay, I'm gonna tighten the cable just a bit. See if I can speed that up. Oh yeah. Okay, so now it's not dropping down. So that's working really quite well. It's not perfect. Pretty sure if I replaced the cable in the housing, it would be just exactly perfect. But as we like to say around here, it's probably good enough for who it's for. I don't know. 
I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna replace the cable and housing. Let's make it right. Tried to pick a camera angle here so you can see everything. There's a little, little plastic screw back here that we can take out. Try to not drop on the ground. So there's that little plastic screw. Oh, I dropped the screw. Got it. I didn't do it on purpose. I swear to God, I did not do that on purpose. Then uh, we'll cut off this beautiful cable tip that I put on before. Throw that away, as my grandfather would say. He would throw things away. these pieces of housing are the guilty culprit. I'm gonna cut new ones. So when you get your housing cut, you can take a sharpened spoke or whatever pokey tool you fashion and kind of stick it in the end. Just open her up. That helps things move friction free. And then you got your ferrules. So these ferrules don't like to press on all the way. They're very, they fit very tight. I mean, there's a few systems I can use, you know, I can find something hard and try to pound them on. But really I've found that the only way that they seat themselves is once you have them on the bike and you push the lever and it crunches everything together. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, I've got this fancy new cable. Super slick stainless steel slicker than snot on a doorknob. And we just gotta, all that needs to happen here is we gotta hem and haw and I'm gonna do this left-handed. No, I'm not. Man, it's not always this hard, but it's being not difficult right now. Oh, no, I can see the light. Okay, this is getting ridiculous. My God. Oh, finally. All right. That was silly. Lube the cable a bit. Brand new housing. That is very slick. Friction free. Little dabble do ya. This is a good camera angle for fixing bikes. I like this one. A lot of people say you don't need the lube and actually it's counterproductive because it'll attract gunk with these stainless slick cables and lined housing and all the other fancy stuff I'm using here. Um, and they might be right. But I've always done it this way. And that lined housing gets a groove in it over time. And I think that's what we were experiencing. So I am now with the cable anchored, just really cranking on it. And you can see all that slack. That was all four of those ferrules seating themselves on the housing. <laughs> you wanna do that before you get to clipping and crimping and finishing. But now it's pretty safe to grab a cable tip, give it a clip, grab your Park Tool EP1 cable tip crimping tool the most overkill tool I have. You really don't need it, but man, sure does make a nice finish. I like it. 
Okay, let's see how we did. Here goes something. Oh, a little bit of a hesitation there. We're gonna add a quarter turn. Coming back down, yeah, it totally was the cable and housing. Look at that, good as new. That's what I call a mechanical win. There are few things in my life that satisfy me as much as figuring something out like that, doing what I think is right, and then having that kind of result. It's very satisfying work when you get it right. So remember a long time ago, when I sprayed the crap out of that chain, and I've worked it a little bit, and that one step as a cleaner and lubricant has kind of flushed all the gunk out. And I just kind of take a rag and keep flipping it around. And that's how I clean a chain. And it's still got plenty of lubrication in all those bushings. And hopefully I've wiped off a bunch of the lubrication that'll collect more gunk. Try to use the same angle here on the front. I think it's fine. So I'm in the middle chain ring right now. And I'm gonna go to the low gear and down to the high gear. And I check to see if there's any rubbing at all and there's not. Now I'll go up into the big ring, do the same thing. And you'll expect a little rubbing there. That one you don't want any rubbing, we're good. Okay, you're gonna expect rubbing and low, little and little. But in the granny gear, there's no rubbing, it's perfect. Which is exactly what I expected on this bike. That is all good. Just going through and wiping down a few spots where I see that the lube kind of traveled into places where it shouldn't go. It's probably all over the disc rotor, right? Everybody's like, be careful using aerosols around your discs. Ah, crisis. Why would you do that, bike farmer? Uh oh, the comments are getting to me. I love the comments. Please leave comments. Now's the time to mention it. You should probably like this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this video. Make some comments. Let me know what you think. Do all of the things. Um, you can become a member of the channel. That's a way to support me directly. None of this happens in a vacuum. I do depend on this income to feed my family, so I appreciate it. The best thing is a super thanks. You can just send me five bucks and I'll go buy a taco. And then I don't have to worry about eating, feeding myself. You can send me 20 and I'll buy four tacos. Can you believe that tacos are five dollars a piece now? Thanks, Biden. So there it is. Noah's bike is finished. I can ride this around. I can ride this bike across the country. I should probably put air in the tires. I'm gonna do that. Let's just reach over here and grab the air hose. Put air in your tires. I would have figured it out eventually. I'm gonna just put a lot of air in the tires. It's been so nice. And poor Noah hasn't been able to go for a bike ride. He works too hard anyway. He's been over here working. We rebuilt the garage. We got a, the garage shop, it's pretty sweet. It's also my bike show room in the summer. It's where all my used bikes go. Really nice. I know I should have made videos about it, but it's so much work to make the videos and I just really needed to get that project done. So, cause bike season is right around the corner and it felt a time crunch. So I decided to forego that. Anyway, now Noah's bike is done. Thank you so much for watching this far. That's the best way to support the channel. It's just by watching. The algo loves that. I love that. I hope you do too. If you like this content and want to see more, click that notification bell so you and your bike can stay tuned.